Famcast Media. Bitch. Straight up out the dungeon, motherfucker, better dodge. Johnny Branch got the spliff in the gun, stay tall, don't hang. Catch your faith from the hoes, rotten as they come, show. Welcome to the show. Pack another boss, make a hoe get down. Pack another boss, make a hoe get down. Another motherfucking episode come around, better put the shit on, kid, need it right now. Pack another boss, make a hoe get down. Pack another boss, make a hoe get down. Another motherfucking episode come around, better put the shit on, kid, need it right now for the dungeon. Ladies and gentlemen, D motherfucking Ryan. And welcome to another episode of From the Dungeon Podcast. I am your host, D Rotten. This is episode 124, 124, motherfuckers. And I got live, bro, from fucking Whittier, California, the homie Zach, the Rabbit Lopez. Hey, what up, D? What's going on? You, that intro went hard as fuck, bro. <laughs> I was not ready for that. <laughs> I, 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 I like I like every time I come in, I always like think I should just fucking lower it down. I'm like, yo, because I'm not gonna have this energy all the time. But I'm like, it just comes out. I'm like, I can't. Oh, you, you gotta you gotta start it off hot, man. You just gotta go. You know. So what's up, brother man? How you doing, man? Not too bad. Not too bad. Tomorrow's Friday. We're chilling. You know, I'm having a little bit of uh, you know on Twitch. We call it apple juice. Oh. Um, yeah, you know, I don't want to. You don't. You don't put. You don't put the the lime in that motherfucker. I I don't. I don't have any on hand right now. Ah, okay. Yeah, no. I fucking. Unfortunately, I uh, when I was when I was out there, I was at a I was at a a bar in uh Doherty or a Doherty or something like that. I don't yeah, know yeah. Pronounce. Yeah, I was at a bar for uh we were celebrating the uh the life of my boy uh Ryan Demarest Ryan D. Okay. And they were like uh they were like you know I was like oh let me get a Modelo they were like oh you ever put a fucking lime in it I was like put a lime in a Modelo I was like. What is that? that's not a fucking Corona, you know? And uh, and and fucking, I tried it and I was like, yo, the shit's fucking banging, bro. It's not bad at all. Yeah, I don't know. We just throw limes in everything. Like if if I'm drinking any, I mean, Modelo is my go-to for sure. But any beer, if there's lime, yeah, just, just throw it in there. You don't like the yeah. no, the Modelo Negro? Oh yeah, that, that's that's my that go-to, bro. Over here, bro, I'll buy the Modelo because it's stronger. It, it took me a while to get into it. You know, I'm I'm not gonna lie, but now I I I, I could get down with it. Yeah, no, it, that shit fucking hits you, bro. It hits you real good. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. But Did you fu- try a uh, uh, Super Steve's uh, Michi mix? No, actually, okay. This is the funny part, bro. I went there with my boy Scribble, right? Yeah, yeah. And I already drank like two fucking like two bottles of stout. I don't know what fucking stout I was drinking, but I drank two stouts, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was already a little fucking tipsy because I mean I haven't drank right. in months. You know, I'm like, I'm trying to cut, fuck, cut it, cut it out and shit, you know, maybe right. just do it on special occasions. So I was like, that's a special occasion. So I knocked back two stouts. And when I got there or whatever, uh, Mario offered me some fucking, uh, you know, some of the devil's lettuce. Oh yeah. And that's the good stuff. Let and, me tell you that. And I was like, no, 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 I don't mix. I don't mix. <laughs> so then he brought out this michelada thing. He's like, yo, pour your beer in it. And I looked at him like I was retarded. Like, what is that? Like a fucking, like a, like a cup of soup or something like <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, a cup of noodles. Yeah, it didn't comprehend in my brain, bro. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Right, right. So then I was like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. So we sit down, bro. We get ready to do the fucking show. He gives me another fucking bud or whatever, and I drink the bud. And then I, I'm sitting next to him, and I'm like, fucking, I, I fanboy out on these podcasts, dude. You know? And I'm like, right. I'm sitting next to Mario 81, bro. I got Super Steve to my right. I got fucking Johnny C right here fucking in front yeah. of me, bro. I'm like, oh, this is dope. Then I look at Mario and he point, he gives me the fucking look and he's like, you want some? <laughs> and I didn't want to look like a bitch. So right. I was like, no, I feel that. you know, so I was like, fuck it. I'll take a fucking hit. I took a hit. And right when I took that hit, bro, I was like, what the fuck did I just do? Yeah. You know, I was it's, like, it's over. Bro. I was done, bro. I was like, yo, th- that's it, bro. I'm like, I'm one hit, one hit a quitter. Yeah, no, with that stuff, with Mario, Mario stuff, he just knows how to pick him. Like all of his stuff. Like I, I just, I can't, you know, I, I'm not a big, a big, uh, you know, smoker. Yeah. But, but socially, if, you know, if it's there, yeah, why not? You know, if I'm hanging out, chilling with the boys, whatever. Um, but Mario stuff just hits different, bro. I remember I have to find it, but there's like t- at least two episodes, man, where I'm just blaze the fuck out, you know? Yeah, he's, he's, and, he said he fuck, he called it a salad. Like, what the fuck oh, is yeah. a salad, bro? 
I think he like mixes like two two different uh, flowers or something, two or three, something <laughs> like that. But no, like there was like, there was two occasions where I'm just gone and I end up finding chips or something in the middle of, of the podcast, oh, and sure. I'm 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 silent, I'm mute, but all you hear is me munching into the mic is like. <laughs> <laughs> like just like and i'm getting closer and closer and closer to the mic and it's just getting louder and mario is just like zach shut the fuck up <laughs> you know um, it's i can't i can't help it man you but, did this to me bro like, like, i didn't have any, <laughs> I, I didn't have no munchies on there bro but i i downed my water and then i'm like looking scavenging on the table trying to grab other motherfuckers waters and then super steve just like yo you want a water i'm like yeah give me the water <laughs> yeah, you're trying to come back. Yeah, it, it took me a half. <laughs> and yo, I swear to God, we did the podcast for an hour and a half, and for a half an hour of that, bro, I was gone. Yeah, I, I I don't remember really. Like, all I remember is I wanted to get up and walk out, and I'm like, I'm in Compton, I'm freaking out, I, I'm in the studio, I gotta get out of yeah. here. And I was like, and I was trying like, no, just relax, breathe, breathe. I was like trying to woos out myself and the shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you would have been fine. I mean, I I don't know, maybe, but. There's a 7-Eleven on the corner and then Popeye's down the street. You would have been fucked. I don't know. I don't know if I want to walk around Compton, bro, looking for a 7-Eleven. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's 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 pretty wild. But, I mean, as long as you, you know, act like you're from there, no one messes with you. Yeah, you, know? you could tell I wasn't from there, bro. You just, just, <laughs> just looking at me, bro. I was like, yeah, he's not from here, bro. You know, I'm walking no, I, around. I'm walking around that. with a fucking with a fucking Adidas tracksuit on and shit, dude. Like, I don't know, man. That that can mean you got big money, bro. Uh, I, don't I don't know, know. dude. I look like I was straight out of corn, bro. <laughs> I mean, things things change, bro. It's not it's not the the '90s anymore. So everyone's everywhere. Everyone everyone's doing everything. You know what I the, mean? That's what I was. Still, still a scary place, but you know. I mean, that's what I was worried about, bro. I was like, "Yo, is like, is this gonna be like the fucking movie or like?" Because I remember, I'm I'm 44, dude. So I mean, I I was aware of when Compton was Compton, on right. on the news and shit. And I'm like, oh, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "We're looking like that." I didn't see no cops. I'm like, "Where the fuck are the cops?" Yeah, you know. I mean, I remember they always said there was cops everywhere in Compton. And it was just, it was just the only thing that, the only thing that freaked me out though was just like somebody across the street from him was just acting weird. It was just tripping me out. Like they were just like looking for something in their in their backyard or something. It was just weird. I don't know. Yeah. But well, I, mean, I mean, but that's that's just how it is over here in LA. You got tweakers and whatnot. It's just, I mean, I'm I'm used to it, you know. No. Nah. And Compton's not as bad as it used to be. You nah. know? And everyone's just like, oh, Watts and South Central, like nah. They're all the same at this point. You know, if shit's going to go down, it's going to go down anywhere. You yeah, know what no, I mean? he, Even here in Whittier. It's not, I mean, there's good parts of Whittier, but there's mm -hmm. some pretty bad parts of Whittier, too. You know what I mean? Uh, my boy my boy Matt lives out in Whittier. He lives uh, like, okay. right, right by fucking, I guess, the fucking where the highway comes into Whittier or some shit, bro. He's, I, don't, I don't know what part, bro. I just I just know it's it's in Whittier. <laughs> right, right. But I yeah, mean, there's, there's there's a lot of things that go on over here because Whittier is fucking huge, bro. It is huge. I cannot begin to explain to you how big it is. I mean, you got like Whittier, you know, where I'm at is like more like North Whittier. It's, there's not even really like a name for it. It's just Whittier. You got Whittier, West Whittier, East Whittier and South Whittier. Nah. South Whittier is, is, is that's where it gets bad. You know what I mean? But then you got like Whittier Heights, Friendly Hills, you know, stuff like that. It's huge. But no. with, like the dumbest one is right next to us. You got Pico and Pico is legit like three main streets. So you got like Beverly, Whittier, Washington and like, OK, Slauson. So four streets, but it's in between the freeway. So from the 605 to where the water uh, canal is, no. that's all it is. It's like. You drive in through to Pico and you're in and out in like 10 minutes, but it's like the ghettoest spot ever. Like, mm. I absolutely hate going to Pico, bro. Like, I, I go everywhere, but for some reason, I always somehow run into someone who wants to start some shit with me oh, in Pico. Nowhere else. Like, like I go Compton. I go South Central, you no. know. It's Riverside, San Bernardino, you know, whatever. Anywhere that you want to call is hard. You know, I'm, I go out there and everyone's chill. You know, hey, what's up, man? You know, whatever. But Pico, like, no, it's like everyone wants to look at you all, all fucked up, you know, and start some shit. It's just 
it's too small to try and be that hard. Like, what are you gonna do? I'm, I you mean, know, I mean, where to put Pico on the map? Like, no. You 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 did say something. <laughs> you, you did say something on uh on the West Coast Pop Lock podcast, bro, the other day that that like I was just like I was like er when you were like you when when you said you you you're Puerto Rican. I am Puerto Rican, and I'm like Puerto Puerto Rican in the West Coast. Like, what the like. To me, Puerto Ricans are in like fucking, you know, Jackson Heights, bro, and fucking the Bronx and shit, bro. Yeah. Or around where I am. You know, around fucking yeah. Jersey City fucking Heights. That's what the that's what the Ricans are. Oh yeah. So they they all over New York and Florida. Yeah, but we, we managed to make it out here. I'm, I I don't know. <laughs> my my uh my grandfather's from the island, so uh him and I like two of his brothers made it out here. Mm-hmm. Don't know why, don't know how, but you know, this uh, is where I ended up. You are you? Are I mean? you? Are you always from? Uh, are you from Whittier? Um, born, born here. Um, spent a lot of time in East LA. You know, uh, mom, mom, uh, went to school and then worked graveyard. So I was with like my aunts and my grandma, and you know, so I spent a lot of time in East LA, my yeah. like younger years, and uh, so East LA and Whittier, you know, more or less. All right. I'm everywhere, you know. And you went, you went to school out. Uh, you went to school out in East LA. You went to school uh, out in Whittier. No, I, I, I was after you know I was uh, able to start attending school and not necessarily needing someone to watch over me. A lot of that's when I, I, I stood in, in in Whittier. So I think up until like maybe like seven, you know. Do do you that's know? Just all do, my do, you, years. do you know a uh, uh, Atoma Fox? I don't. The band Atoma Fox, they're from Whittier. Uh, uh, three piece, uh, three piece, uh, female, uh, kind of like punk band. Okay. Yeah, they're, I remember they're from Whittier. Uh, Re- uh, I know it's uh, Risa, uh, and I know uh, Brittany. Oh, actually, no, I I do actually. I know Risa. Risa for sure. She played. Uh, she sang, mm-hmm. and then I believe she was on bass. I could be wrong. Either bass or guitar, but she, I know she sang. Yeah, I just, well, yeah, she's I, been to a few of my shows. Oh, okay, yeah, because I know she plays video games too. I know you say you do Twitch and shit, you know. I know she does. She does like the Twitch thing too. Yeah, no, she's she's good people. She's good people. All right, well, we're gonna just jump around, bro. Just jump around, Brian. Let's do it. Let's you know, do it. How the fuck did you get hooked up in the fucking pigs, man? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So here's the thing: we talked about this story very briefly this last Tuesday on, on West coast. Okay. okay. Um, this band rundown creeps, they're from El Sereno, which is like East LA, but it's like North East LA. I guess you could say like kind of Alhambra ish. Um, it's uh, got punk Shout out, shout out to fucking, uh, grill them all. Alhambra. Oh yeah. Off of Maine. Bad, baddest fucking place I've ever been to for burgers. I mean, if you want to leave with like almost a heart attack, you know, <laughs> Word yeah. up, dude. like you can't, you can't like for me, all I get is a burger. There's no point in getting fries. Oh, you no, know, I, you, like, I got the uh, fucking um, the no Mr. Nice fries. Oh, OK, okay. bro. I was on the bowl all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the, that's the reason why I don't go any, over there anymore. I just I know I'm <laughs> paying for it. So it has to be like a special occasion. Yeah. And I need to know that I have my schedule cleared. You know, <laughs> I learned my lesson. Trust me. I know that now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the behemoth and my favorite is uh, jumping the fryer. I, I had the behemoth. OK, so, you know, then, you know, fuck, dude. <laughs> fuck. Yes, but, but yo, I'm telling you right now, bro. That was the best fucking meat I think I've ever had since fucking Peru. Really? The best piece of fucking meat, bro. Like, like fuck McDonald's, fuck Burger King, fuck, fuck in and out, all that shit. Yeah. That meat was fucking on point, man. Oh, yeah. No, no. They're, they know what they're doing over there. Um, let me see. I want to give a shout out to the, the head cook out there. Oh, if I couldn't. I have her. Her name is Nikki Grasso, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to her. She knows. She knows what she's doing out there. Oh yeah, hell dude. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I dropped like fucking sixty, seventy bucks in there. I was walking out with fucking t-shirts and shit, all fucking. Oh yeah. Like you know, like I, I got it, bro. You know, I'm, I'm just. Who knows when the next time I'll fucking be out in this motherfucker? You know. 
Yeah, that's the thing. They they did it. They did it because they were uh, a, a talk, not a taco truck, a food truck. That's what I heard. And that's it, what my, it, my, my boy Rat told me that. Yeah. So you can do it. People are doing it. You know what I mean? And they got their own store. And I think the food truck still goes out. Not as not as much anymore. Because I, I was one because I heard there is a place. There is another grill them all in like Chicago or fucking Minnesota or some shit. Like same kind of I fucking premise. Like 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 heavy metal fucking burgers and shit like that. You know, like named after yeah. heavy metal stuff. But right, right. I mean, I really think they should fucking franchise that shit out. I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. Because that tends to ruin things, man. Yeah, I know, I know. I just like just put one in New York, man. Fuck. I don't wanna eat I wanna eat more of that. East Coast, West Coast, I could see it. I'd be down. You know? But uh back back to uh, you know, uh pigs and all that. Yes. Uh rundown creeps. You know, I met them. We were part of the the same um record label for a bit mm-hmm. that record label kind of folded but i became uh good friends with them um richard you know showed me a lot you know and his music their music was great so i uh roadied and did merch for them for a while okay um and they had been on pigs i think like maybe twice at that point so they got asked to do the pig catastrophe which is their like yearly uh annual show has has like he ever has idea. he ever fucking like like live feeded that kind of shit the big stash yeah it, it usually is i gotta look for it though man i, I need to see that shit i need, yeah, I need to see it it's dope this year's gonna be a little different though um because it originally was like a live podcast and they'd bring in some like you know some bands it's still the same thing but just live and it changed to a concert where they had you know, five or six of the bands, and there's not really like talking points. So you, know, you guys are just really like, it's like a show. It's like a K Rock show or something like that. You know, you fucking, you guys yeah. just DJing but or VJing were, or whatever they call that, you know, hosting. Exactly. But okay. they're, they're bringing it back though, the original. So now we're on uh, August 29th. What the fuck is that in the background? Uh, we got some fireworks still going on. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's fucking July 8th, bro. <laughs> Hey, that's going to go on for like another week, bro. Oh, shit. That's crazy that she caught that. Yeah, did I see? I was like sitting there. I was like, somebody's shooting. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> nah. I mean, I either way, it I didn't, me. I didn't see you fucking jump. And I'm like, no, he's, he's not fucking ducking or nothing, bro. So what's going on <laughs> over there? Nah, I'm in the corner of a cul-de-sac, bro. Like, there's nothing going on where I'm at. You know what I mean? Maybe down down the street, but no, nah, where I'm at, I'm chilling. So, all right. Uh, but yeah, so they they have that show. I think this one's coming up on August 29th. I want to say. Okay. So, so we have two bands, uh, the Rukas and uh, Scarlet Siren. All right. I believe. Oh, you got the Rukas be- flame. Oh yeah. Oh, that's dope, bro. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Um, but yeah, so they 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 played uh Pixastrophe at, at uh Spikes. Spike's Bar and Grill, which used to be in, in Rosemead, you know, they they had all of the uh, rockabilly and psychabilly shows there. Mm-hmm. In fact, right here, what I have on my wall, this red. I see it right there. There, there it is. I'm trying to <laughs> the red one. That's that's the flyer from the final show because they uh, they tore it down. Oh, but, the club. Yeah, oh, unfortunately. Shit. So that one, that lineup, we had the Delta Bombers, Gambler's Mark, the Henchmen. Uh, the legendary swagger, uh, Edward Transylvania and Jay Smalls. Dude, the fucking names of the bands, dude, is like holy shit, man. That was a stacked show, bro. But all week, that entire final week was show after show after show. Each one getting getting sold out. I was there three times that week. Oh shit! It, it, oh man, I missed that spot. But anyways, so they had the show there. Mm-hmm. I wasn't 21 yet, so uh, showed up, set up the band and everything, hung out outside, and then the bouncer's like, hey, we need to see your IDs. You guys going to hang out? And I was just like, oh, I, I'm not 21 yet. So he's like, oh, well, I mean, you can hang out here in the parking lot, but you can't come in. I'm like, damn, I'm not playing. There's no point in me being here. I'm just going to jam, you know, and then Mario and Jose were, were setting up, so I met them very briefly. Who's, 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 who's Which one's Jose? Is that, is that Watts? Uh, he, no, no, no! It's Evil Noriega. Oh, okay. oh, the dude, the dude. 
All right, the, the guy. I, yeah. I basically call him like like Mister Negative, bro, because that motherfucker just oh, yeah. like hating on everything, dude. <laughs> no, that's 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 his role. That's his role. He likes playing <laughs> the devil's advocate, like very, very heavily. Well, he's working yeah. it, bro, because you never see his fucking face. He's just got his back to you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's his that's his thing. Okay. You know what I mean? He's a cool dude. He's cool. You know, he just likes stirring the pot. You know, fucking. Butter style. Well, he's funny, bro. He, he did say he's like, <laughs> he did say he's like, I'm one foot in the grave already. I'm like, damn, dude, you're not even fifty, bro. <laughs> like, chill, man. Yeah. Nah, but he's 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 got a lot of ex- life experience, you know. So he's yeah, like, like, he's feeling it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, so that was the that was the first time I met pigs was for a pig catastrophe that I got kicked out of. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> So how so how did how did how did you get asked to like come on the show and like I was like you seem like you're a mainstay. Oh, um, so what happened was I mean I play in a multi, in a few bands. Um, I got Swine, hardcore punk metal band, yeah. June Clivis and the Diddy Boys, which which is outlaw country bluesy rock and roll band. Then I just got picked up by the Downbeats, which is a uh, rockabilly rock and roll revival band that's signed by uh, Wild Records. Um, so. Uh, Swine had their EP coming out. Yeah, I wanted to you know debut it and like share it everywhere and just get it anywhere and everywhere as much as I can. I knew I knew Pigs, but I hadn't had anything to really go on there for yet. So uh, I took Swine on there. You know, oh. we rocked the fuck out of that stage, and it was a good time. And then uh, what happened was the next week's band had canceled on them. So Mario was like, "Hey, can you bring your other band on?" I'm like, "Sure." You know, so I was on two weeks in a row and I'm going to tell you, I am the only guest Mm -hmm. to have starred two weeks in a row. The only one. And he's on him. And that's almost like fucking 300 people, bro. I mean, 300, 300, almost. What is he almost up to 300 episodes? What is like 290 something? This this pitch catastrophe is going to be our 400. Oh, four. I'm fucking all right, man. That's right. Yeah. All right. He's up. He's up to like 390, right? Or something like that. Yeah. We're in the three nineties right now. All right. So I, I'm no I, I hold that record. I don't expect that to be, you know, toppled anytime soon. You Ren- know what I mean? Renaissance man? Yeah, <laughs> what am I? It's the home girl. Uh, yeah, so uh but then after that, like I got close to well with uh June Clivis and the Diddy Boys, we got mm. uh, a lot of airtime with uh local music experience. Uh, the internet radio uh, station. Yeah, I, I, so, you know, I, I, I want to know. Do they really? Do they really shit on swine, as Mario says? Or, uh, no, yes and no. Um, but there, it's it, at this point, it's just a big like inside joke, you know? Because because I didn't uh, I didn't know whether to diss them or not on the show. I'm like, man, fuck, you know. He starts all <laughs> low, and I was about to say, yo, fuck them. And I was like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I don't know these people. He might be fucking around, and I don't really understand. Yeah, no, it's fine. He's fuck Ray, dude. Fuck Ray, it's fine. <laughs> I, I say it to him all the time. I love the dude, but you know, fuck you, you know. <laughs> I know he's he's a cool, dude. Um, so, uh, because I sent him some of my stuff, he played me one time. He didn't play me the day he was supposed to play me because he like he likes to drink, so he didn't even make it to New Music Mondays, and mm. you know, <laughs> so it was a whole thing. And so like I hadn't been played after that because supposedly my stuff got deleted ac- accidentally, oh, you know. But also like they don't really play my style of music because I mean it was a morning show from like eight to ten, and it was yeah. all like like ska, reggae, top forty sounding music. You know what I mean? Mm. So be hit like like yeah like real quick like it's like a cup, it's like a cup of coffee bro straight up black cup of coffee that's swine bro yeah. wake you have up to. yeah so um yeah mario gives him a hard time i gave him a hard time but that's why i have my own show in there now it's fucking swine saturdays just like that's another thing just too. to fucking piss him off you know <laughs> well let's look at, let's play a track from swine right here let's and, do it. and we'll talk about swine saturdays all right, all right, man. We're gonna play. This is uh this is the track Machine Head. You got anything to say about Machine Head or anything? A little oh inside? man, let me tell you, I I love how this song came out because not a lot of people know about this, but this song was actually a throwaway song. Really? Um, I wrote this the the main riff. I wrote it for another band, one of my old bands, and I just could not build off of it. 
And mm. one day I, I was going through, because uh, when I write songs, I like, I write them and I play, I play it and record it on my phone. So it's just in my, my picture library, you know, yeah. I, I clicked on it like, oh, hey, which, what is this? And I started listening to it. And I was like, that's not bad. So I started messing around with it again. And then just everything just lined up. This was a five minute song. After revisiting it, everything just clicked, clicked and clicked. Five minutes, wrote the whole fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so the only part that I did not write on the song were the vocals. Duke is a very great lyricist and I, I hit him with anything and he he just pumps it out. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I, I I just I love this song and I love how 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 heavy it hits and the fact that fans love this fucking song. And when, it's it's a catchy melody and everyone's singing it. This is Ray's favorite swine song apparently. Wait, when so, when is, when is uh, when is this album supposed to come out? Oh man, as soon as I get all this shit fucking done cuz the album is done. Yeah. But the thing is this is our first official album. The band has been around for uh 6 7 years. But okay. this lineup has only been together. Well, the full lineup has only been together like maybe two years. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I've been in the band about four years now. We released the EP and then some lineup changes. You know, you know how it is. Yeah. Um, but this is the band's first official full length album. So I don't want to just sleeve it. You know, I want to have a full jewel case. Of course. You know, and then, and then having the pamphlet, you know, that's what's kind of stopping me because I have the things I want to put into it, mm. but then there's there's page restrictions, so I got to kind of figure out a way to make it still all work because I want to put the lyrics in there because, you Oof. know, for people who aren't in like metal and punk and all these other things, you might not be able to understand the lyrics. You know what I mean? So... Well, I, really I, do- I, I didn't... I mean, I, I, I listened to metal and shit, bro, and I still didn't understand what this dude was saying. But I felt <laughs> the energy, though, man. Yeah. So... That's I want to put that together. So as soon as I figure that out, I mean the album should have been out. I'm not gonna lie, it should have been out. It's so, just so you're not. Put, I, I'm not. You're not putting out the digital until the fucking physical's done. Yeah, I want to do it all together. Okay. You know, it's like if it's release, I want to do a full release. Mm-hmm. You know, I it, for me it kind of doesn't make sense. Like, hey, here's the album, and you can stream it everywhere, but then you can buy it later on. You know, because yeah. especially if like people are streaming it, I'm not making money off of that. You know, not that it's about making money. But I need it's, it's, some return. Come on, you know man! I mean? you, you you put work into the motherfucker, man. Exactly. You, you don't need to explain shit to me, brother, man. You put work yeah. into it, bro. You should get something fucking back, bro. You know? Yeah. It's principles, bro. It's the principle of it, man. Oh yeah. But yeah, man. This is uh, this is Machine Head off the album Weapons of Self Destruction from Swine. We'll be right back. Sure.
Where the fuck is Ozfest, man? Damn. Straight up, y'all motherfuckers need to be on fucking Ozfest, dude. With that yeah. fucking jam. Put us anywhere. Put us on the stage. We'll fucking tear that shit up. Let me tell you. Um, so I I started playing with the downbeats, right? Mm. Wild records, rockabilly, uh, rock and roll type stuff. Um, and the pres I got brought in because the president owner got got word of my name, wanted me for a few different bands. Okay. Um, but. His son, he, his son has a band that's on Wild Records. Uh, the Wednesdays, W E N Z D A Z E, um, very uh, garage punky. Hilarious, because over here in Jersey, we got a band called the Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put them together. <laughs> the days of the week, you know. <laughs> um, but they they sound very similar to. Uh, you know, I would I would compare them to like Iggy Pop and the Stooges. Okay. You know, um, and they're good. They're good. They're fucking kids. Um, seventeen, fifteen, and fifteen. You know, and the singer he found his voice, he found his style, and you know, back then I was still trying to figure it out. You know, so good for them. They have a great sound. Um, but so, anyways, they had a show on a Thursday night out in Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. um and he hit me up the president owner was like hey do you know any other punk bands that are like a little bit tougher and i was like i'm in a punk band throw me on there it's like oh fab fab what's your band's name like all oh, swine it's like all right yeah cool i'll send you uh, the flyer sends me the flyer we got mm -hmm. wednesdays like i said like garage punk yeah um dealing in the beat which is very bluesy rock and roll then the mccharmley's which is like an indie indie pop band and it's wine so so i texted him i was like hey i just checked out the bands I was, are you sure and he's like oh we're all about diversity i'm like all right we'll do where, it where, 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 did, where did he put you at on the lineup though we opened oh, we were the shit. opening band um and we warmed the fuck up that's that stage that crowd everyone absolutely loved us but it was a big shift from from us to the mccharmley's you know and mind you it was like a little janky stage you know like you stand on it you you move a step and you could feel it like oh, oh you shit. know yeah and once the, the show started we didn't feel shit just because we were rocking and moving the entire time so you know it's like if, if you're on a boat and you get seasick, just get drunk. You won't know. You won't feel it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's 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 basically what it was like. You know what I mean? It's just it, it was wild. It was it was wild. We turned some heads, we made some new fans and some new friends, and it was a great time, but we were the heaviest fucking band that night. I mean, I mean, it sounded like you should have went the opposite and put swine, like you like you work your way up, you know, like but like you yeah. st you start off fucking punching in the face, and it's like, oh. Yeah, they weren't ready. They were not <laughs> ready, you know, especially for a wild records night. Like, I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> so now now what like it's so is swine Saturdays like a swine show, like with the, like, the, um, the momentum and stuff like that, the music you play no. on there. No. So the whole idea of swine Saturdays was 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 two things. One to piss off Ray. You know, fucking poor Ray, dude. Yeah, he, he doesn't play swine, but now swine has their own show. And then two, play all the music that does not get played throughout the rest of the day. You know, so it's the heavier side of things. So I play anything, any and all types of punk, any all types of metal, mm. uh, psychobilly. And he plays ska, but he does not play ska core. I've, so, I've never even heard of that fucking subgenre of a subgenre. Really? All right. 
All right. All right. I'd have to give you a full lesson of that, man. But but if you're if you came to L.A. and you were deep in the trenches, you know, South Central and go in the backyard DIY shows no. and everything, they would call it white people ska versus <laughs> Latino ska. <laughs> you know, because you got like the Orange County, real big fish, no. you know, less than Jake. Then you come over here and you got Viernes Trece, Discarados, Mata Mosca, Mafia Rusa. You know, it's uh, it's primary. It's a lot heavier, and it's primarily sung in in Spanish. You know, it's it's crazy, and it's it's ska core, so it's it's hardcore ska. You know, that's insane. some of it is just, it's just faster pace, maybe a little bit more distorted guitar, and yeah. some of it is straight up just metal with horns. You know, it's it's it gets pretty wild. You know what I mean? That's and that's crazy. Like I love going to those shows, but but like it's kind of scary. Like I've taken my girl out to some of these shows not not the backyard stuff i don't really do that that much anymore mm. um but if they're at like a club like uh catch one or they did slide bar or some stuff like that like it'd be crazy you need to know the songs you can't like i mean in anything if you know if you're into metal or punk you need to know the songs in order to be in the pit you know the, the arrangements and changes and everything it's it's important with this even more so because you can go from the dance like, oh, like, hey, I'm skanking, I'm skanking, you know, and then all of a sudden it goes from like a cool, like upbeat to um, heavy fucking shit where you're it's a mosh pit, you know? No. So like I, I like I said, I did it. I did it once or, or twice, you know, with my lady and we'd be in the pit dancing and whatnot. And all of a sudden it changes and I got to push her out, you know? She can't. She oh. doesn't. She's not into this stuff. You know. She does. She doesn't. Ma. She doesn't do any of that. No. Sky is the closest I can get her into, into uh, my music. So you know what I mean. So Swine's. How long has Swine Saturday been active? Uh, a few months. A few months. I I'd have to. Che- I could check right now. Um, but yeah, only a few months. Um, the first one was in March. Yeah, March sixth. That was the debut show. Hmm. So. Um, but yeah, I play anything and everything, you know, we've got into crust and grind and, um, you know, psychedelic punk and, you know, and, 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 and the local, the local music experience, it only plays just local Southern California bands or it plays anybody. It, I mean, that's the, the whole premise of it is supposed to be, uh, local I mean, music. you know, hence the name, you know, but so I mean, Cal. I was just like wondering, like, do you sneak in bands from other States? Like, you know, the music yeah. and shit. I don't. But Ray does, especially when they do like classy chassis and stuff like that, more in the rockabilly side of things, because mm-hmm. he does play Delta Bombers and and Shunda and the Howlers, who are both from Vegas, you know, but they're pretty big in the scene. They do play out here quite frequently, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, some of the players are from L.A., so I guess you could kind of sneak it in, but it's primarily SoCal music, so L.A., O.C., Inland Empire, San Diego, that's basically it. Yeah, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. That's all I do. You keep, know what I mean? Well, you, you guys are known for keeping it local, you know. So just yeah, I'm, I'm, I I respect that. I respect that. So, yeah, so that's the thing. You know, we play their music, and, and every Friday it's like, hey, uh, this is who's playing where. You know, and they list them all. Like the Friday show, it's not really a show because it's just Ray going through the list of shows. If there's a, especially right now, um, since everything's starting to open up. Mm-hmm. that list is taken over because during covid like it, it wasn't a thing friday just became another show and just bullshitted just like everything every other show you know, the, like the, how this is does the, the local game. music experience play hip-hop um no but there has been talks of having a show like that because because ray's brother uh milo um does that you know he djs he does hip-hop um does uh what else does he do like house and trap and um stuff like that but he he used to work with sony and uh compose some music for like some some movies and stuff like that so his his, his whole thing is dj so well, he he's you know putting together a show i'd say own. it is though i mean if you do do hip-hop bro i knew my my boy from el monte uh the fucking uh the infamous scribble who's uh Damn. yeah that scribble. mother yeah fucking throw you can get that motherfucker on there man you know he's he's, he's down there with you guys and shit man you know yeah Fuck it, I'll put that together a show and I'll just have them on there. Because that's the thing. With everything opening up again, I'm back into promoting. Oh, you shit. know? All right. So, yeah, my next big one is uh, August 14th. I got Shanda and the Howlers from Vegas coming down. Mm. You know, then we got uh, June Clivus, which is my band. 
Um, and then uh, a little soon the cow tippers, which is a honky tonk Western band. So you, you do promoting Fantastic. out, you do promoting out like on your own, not with pigs. It's like you do your own, like your own. promoting. Uh, no, that's what the whole, uh, the rabbit hole media group thing is, is that, you know, there's a lot to it. You know, there's, um, it was, it was photography, videography, graphic design. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, you know, the other side of it is podcasting, radio, um, artist representation, artist development, um, yeah. and artist management, uh, if need be. And then, uh, uh, promoting and booking, you know? Cause I, that that was how the the rabbit hole started, and and that's actually how I met Swine. Uh, the original formation was called Fuck It House, which was just a promotion page, you okay. know, Instagram just promoting flyers and whatnot. And then, um, but the incarnation of it was when I I was living on La Puente. Um, a month into moving out, I lost my job, and so I was paying rent and paying bills just by throwing shows out of my backyard. Um, oh, you were doing your own backyard met, shows. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I met Swine was because they played like their first or second show in my backyard. So since then, I was like, these guys are great. They're going to do something. And I just fucking followed them till they fucking pulled me in, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the Rabbit Hole Media Group started out by doing fucking backyard shows, you know? And then eventually it's, it got to, uh, I mean, both both bands both of the releases that we have had mm -hmm. have been because of me okay you know venue scouting you know making relations with the the managers to the owners you know booking bands full bills flyers promoting the fuck out of it everywhere you know and then packing the house that's just i don't know i just do it you I'm, know what I'm, i mean i'm wondering right now where did you get the nickname rabbit is that, is that really your official middle name or yeah your real middle name is rabbit no, <laughs> I'm I gonna wish. say what the fuck. I wish. <laughs> Next time I'm gonna ask been... if you had a sister named Moon or something, bro. Stop. Dang. <laughs> no. Um. Actually, her middle name is Luna. Oh shit. No, that's that's fucking, fuck. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know. I just I don't have laughter, bro. So. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um. What's it called? No. Uh. My favorite movie uh is is pulp fiction okay and they go to a diner called jack rabbit slim yeah um and you get that was that the five, uh, the five dollar milkshake is it a five yeah, yeah exactly so that's where the name come f comes from because before before swine before jim clivis um i had started a solo project the idea of a solo project it was i was you know because i was i i, I bought the upright bass learned how to play it you know, wrote all these songs because it was going to be in between a rockabilly, psychabilly band in between the two. So I can play both shows, yeah. you know. And um, so with that, I adopted the name Zack Rabbit Slim and the Wrecking Boppers. That was the name of that band. Okay. Um, it never came to fruition just because of the fact that, like, as soon as I started writing it and completing, you know, part of parts of the album, I got picked up by Swine. Then six months later, got picked up by June Clivus, and then just schedules just every weekend. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. You know, shows were were everywhere. You yeah. know what I mean? So I just haven't had a chance to go back to it. So, but but Rabbit came from my stage name for my solo project. So it was it was Zach Rabbit Slim, but I'm not Zach Rabbit Slim everywhere. It's just that. So I just kept Zach Rabbit. You know, it goes with the rhyme scheme. Zach Rabbit Lopez. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, shit, so I, just, I, I just stick with that. You know, I believe there was a middle name, bro. When you said it, I was like, oh <laughs> fuck, all right, man. You know, you, you know, you got you got some uh, hippie parents or something, man. You know, maybe. Oh yeah. <laughs> but speaking of backyards, bro, we were talking about the uh, the Los Punk documentary that yeah. uh, that happened in uh, in the L.A. fucking uh, what is that uh, fucking. Monterey Park, Boyle Heights area, kind of East yeah. East Los and shit, man. Swine was actually in the documentary. Really? In fact, that same director um, actually went on to do a mini doc for Revolver um, called, I think, Metal Saves. I'd have to go back and check, but mm. my singer, Duke, and... Um, and Swine was actually featured on the second episode. And Duke's so, the Duke's the OG Swine singer. Yeah. Okay. 
so yes we she she uh kept in touch and uh pushed what, us to one of her other documentaries where, so that where was, cool. was was swine on was swine seen there or were you like a part like were you in the backyard on the video or something like that for which one los punks yeah um there's like like b-roll with swine so but at that point i wasn't in the band yet i was still doing my own thing okay were you at were you at any of the video shoots or no 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 i wish but no no what do you think about the documentary though man um I love it personally. I love it, but I mean, I'm from fucking. I'm from New Jersey, dude. So I mean, that's the thing is, people from the outside love that shit, but people from here fucking absolutely hate it. That's what they I know. noticed. A lot of my friends and a lot of my friends from over there are like, they like, why do you like that shit? I'm like, to me, it's like, it's like fucking. Uh, I don't know, like, ro- it's like a romance of fucking, you know, punk man. It's like punk romance. Yeah, you know, um, the underdogs yeah, winning I mean, that shit. You know. Yeah, it was focused on one guy and his scene and. Uh, there's a lot of issues with with that. Nacho, you know, so. we got not Nacho corrupted, corrupted you. Yeah, yeah. So I won't really get into that. You know, I could tell you about it. You know, after and everything. But no, nah, it was. It's very uh, tunnel visioned. You know, because there's a lot more to the LA scene. You know what I mean? Because mm. it was focused solely on punk. You know, which like, and but the thing is, you could have opened it up. You know, because there's there's a lot of shows where the metal and the punk are integrated or punk and and ska and because it's always like uh, punk versus ska night or some shit. You know what I mean? And the band just flip flop, flip flop. So but it's crazy because, you know, a scene, it's like, oh, I know that guy. I know that band. I played at that spot. You know, I've I got in a fight at that spot. You know, this everywhere. Every scene is it's like. It is LA. It is the punk shows, and mm-hmm. but just there's more to it than that, you know. But I, I guess you can't show everything, no. you know what I mean? So, I mean, I mean, the one thing that tripped me out though, like they were playing on like a driveway, like, oh, like, yeah. like I'm just like, yo, they're just straight up the driveway, they just blocked off half the driveway, and the show was. I'm like, dude, you're like a fucking driveway, like what the fuck, like only in LA, bro. Can't do that hey, shit it's, over it's, here, man. It's gotten better. It's gotten better. It's gotten crazier. We have shows like in the underpasses of freeways, you know, in LA River, um, mansion parties. Uh, it's 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 only getting better, you know, because people who who actually believe in the DIY scene and no. aren't doing it for the money. Because that's the thing. A lot of those those promoters that they did show, yeah, you know, like oh, like I'm only 17, like I'm you know I I do this and I do that. It's like that okay like cool it, it did you're seem like shows, it was, it did but seem you're like not it, was, it seemed like it was all about the money to me from yeah, my point that's of view is, yeah because that's that's the issue with backyard shows and that's the issue with metal and punk in general is the fact that nobody pays because like yeah, I, that, that's pays. what i don't understand bro it's like it's like yo, look, I, I played in bands and shit and i played clubs i think i've may have fucking gotten paid once out of like 10 years one yeah. fucking time it's like yeah. it's like if you're making money at the door, you at least fucking throw the band a couple fucking bucks, you know, like gas money or go get something exactly. to eat or some shit, you know? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like right now where I'm at, the the bar that I'm booking out of is kind of in the hole. So it's I keep the door, they keep the bar. Yeah. You know? Um but before COVID, it would have been like like different. You know, I get the door. Then you know, if I if the bar makes a certain amount of money, I get ten yeah. percent. If they get part past a certain another level, then it's twenty five percent. You know what I mean? And then I could pay the bands. I could you know pay because I'm paying the bands. I'm paying sound. I'm paying the door person. And then the fact that I'm working everything, I got to get a cut too because I'm promoting everything. And not the and then I I put money into the promotion as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm running the ads. So yeah, because I I, I, uh, I never understood why the fuck like a lot of those bands. I'm like. Dude, don't you guys want any money? Like, come on, bro. It's like, yeah, nothing's for fucking free. Your studio time ain't free. Your fucking strings no. aren't free, you know? No. But I mean, I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for everybody, but the like that, the punk mentality is, you know, you do DIY, you do these backyard scenes and, you know, you play, you drink, you get drunk and that's about it. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, it grows you know, old after a while though, Zach. I don't know. Some some of these dudes are like forty years old, still doing it. 
Mm. You know what I mean? And like, I don't mean that. I just, ones- I just mean like, like going to the backyard show, fucking playing just for fucking beer. It gets old. You know, you do yeah. want you do want to eat. You got you know you, you got to play. You know, you got to pay lights and shit and yeah. gas. But these guys are doing it. You know, they love it that much. You know, and that's good. Good for them. But you know, uh. I stopped doing the backyard scene or, or, you know, the LA South central scene just cause you know, get into some bad spots and mm-hmm. cars getting broken into equipment being stolen, uh, fights, you know, getting to fights, you know, I've had friends stabbed. I've had, you know, full on, uh, you know, crew on crew things happen. Uh, the cops are a whole other situation. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? It's the, so, st- the stormtroopers, bro, you got over there, man. Yeah, so there's a lot of reasons why I, I choose to, like, stay away from, We got from, a, you know. We got a, uh, I don't know if this is a statement from Scribble. Uh, the punk mentality is uh, warped, man. The elitism is nuts. Oh, yeah. it's And it gets, that's why I talked about that on uh, uh, West Coast the other day. Um, the heavier you get into the music, yeah, the, the more poser it is to be in the lower you know, lower tiers, you know what I mean? So, and I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we were all there for me back in high school. It was like thrash or nothing. I remember when you, you know? when you were talking about that, I was like, fuck it. Yeah, he's right, dude. It's like,